Everyone, this Wendy Williams situation is really making me shiver. Kane is now saying that Hollywood handlers are allegedly using some dubious tactics to silence Wendy and force her to take medication against her will. You may recall that Kanye exposed his former personal trainer Harley Pasterik, accusing him of being Pastor Nick, and threatened to institutionalize Kanye and send him back to Zombieland after learning that he was a handler with connections to intelligence agencies. It still amazes me that no one in the media acknowledged how completely insane those threats were, but what's even more absurd is that Pastor Nick's career was unaffected by them. Dave Chappelle revealed that he was forced to take antipsychotic medications against his will and that he had to flee to Africa in order to avoid these people completely. Kanye, on the other hand, nearly lost everything due to a tweet. Kanye is not the only one who has been speaking out about these Hollywood handlers over the years. As we all know, Britney Spears was severely mentally harmed by the people who forced her to take large amounts of lithium while she was under conservatorship. Since then, she hasn't been the same. At one point, they were trying to convince me that I'm insane and were trying to get me to take psychotic medication. I stopped taking the regular medication that I had been taking for five years. Lithium is much stronger than the medication I was used to, and if you take too much of it, you risk developing mental impairment. However, I've learned that Wendy Williams is essentially being held captive by the people who gave her financial guardianship. Rumor has it that this most recent documentary, which was just released, is part of their plan to persuade the public that Wendy is unstable and requires this guardianship, but there's more than that. You may recall that a while back, Wendy's bank, Wells Fargo, froze her assets before they had any proof that she was injured. Fast forward a few years, and Wendy is diagnosed with dementia. How convenient. Listen, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but it's not possible that all these celebrities went insane at the first sign of a scandal in the entertainment industry, even though they made a ton of money doing it. This Wendy documentary just does not sit well with the majority of fans. It seems as though someone is going to great lengths to convince us that Wendy is insane so that nobody will question the financial conservatorship they imposed on her without her consent. However, what is the connection between Wendy's circumstances and Kanye's? One of the things that people do these days is try to discriminate against my mind and my thoughts, so I'm sure you've heard of the recent unfortunate developments surrounding the Hollywood handlers who are popping up left and right and treating these celebrities like their puppets. Now that we have a lot to unpack, let's get started. Wendy Williams was devastated to learn that she had been diagnosed with both frontal temporal dementia and Asia just a few days after her lifelong documentary. Where is Wendy Williams? aired on February 24th. Let's examine these diagnoses in more detail. Aphasia is a disorder that impairs speech, writing, and language comprehension. Frontal temporal dementia is a memory loss. Since there is no known cure or treatment, People with this type of dementia need round-the-clock care to go about their daily lives. This is the same disease that Bruce Willis was diagnosed with in essence. It's a brain disease that causes issues with behavior and language. As we all know, Wendy has been very open about her health struggles over the years. Confronting Graves' disease in addition to her struggle with alcohol and drug abuse, but Wendy's supporters are questioning the timing and circumstances surrounding her D.I. Mina diagnosis. This is becoming a topic of conversation because it happened at the same time that her bank, Wells Fargo, declared her to be incapacitated and frozen her assets two years prior. In 2019, Wendy dropped a bomb on her talk show, disclosing that she had been living in a sober house for a brief period of time. This was her official diagnosis. But first, let's give you some background. Wendy has experienced many personal and health issues over the years, and she has never been shy about her battles with substances. Since then, she has been living in a sober house. When you see me arrive at work looking put together straight after the show, it's because my fans have been really supportive of her for being honest about her issues and encouraging people to get treatment if they need it. You know I've struggled with cocaine in the past, but I never went to a place to seek the treatment. I don't know how unless God was sitting on my shoulder, and I just quit our hunting foundation just because I like to take care of my body. 
I told you that I do my Pilates for two hours a day. Launched last week, we've already placed 56 people in recovery facilities across the globe, not just in this country. You can reach us at 888-500, a 24-hour hotline, seven days a week. However, the news that she had a relapse and needed to be taken to even back then, there was a lot of conjecture that Wendy fell off the wagon when she learned that her now ex-husband, Kevin, was unfaithful and having an affair. However, Wendy later came clean and said that she had known about Kevin's affair for years. So what really caught her off guard was the revelation that Kevin had fathered a full child with his sidekick, Sharina, which was the final straw that caused her to file for divorce. While adultery is one thing, having a full baby is quite another. As you mentioned in the New York Times Magazine, you're a very forgiving person. I'm not changing pampers I want to be pampered and get out of here, but Kevin's boldness didn't stop there. He also had the audacity to spend Wendy's money. That was the one thing that happened that I could never be a part of. Flow to banker Sheena's numerous fake companies, and here's what happened he proceeded to purchase a New Jersey home for his mistress, merely a short distance from the place he was living with Wendy. This is a reverse Barbie you can see that he was deceiving money by seeing her in the passenger seat of my Rolls Royce Ferrari. As a loving mother, I have to be glad every morning on TV from New York, even though our son lives in Miami. I've read about this on blogs and tabs and I know the address of the home he bought to share. Kevin shamelessly attempted to throw caution to the wind and play victim while Wendy was undergoing treatment at the Backwoods, which is nine miles from my Livingston home. He even went so far as to give his mistress props for the show's success, saying, this is mom you know everybody's going to love it with this, Wendy is living the highlights right now. Must have his questions, and I won't get into that here. You already know that she is receiving the assistance she requires, and I hope that she will emerge from this stronger. As for my immediate family, you already know that I could not have done this without the kind assistance of my Sharina Hudson, the queen who is currently representing me, and my family is, to put it simply, everyone's family. I have come to the realization that I must swing the sword for my entire family because many people are attempting to take advantage of what I have created, including nobody, with the intention of hurting my family. We'll never match the charisma, energy, knowledge, skill, talent, or whatever other adjective you choose to use to describe Kelvin Hunter, my former girlfriend Wendy Williams, and the entire team that supported us, I mean, the entire team that includes my current girlfriend because it truly does take a village. As previously mentioned, just when we were beginning to hope that Wendy would get lucky, word leaked out that her bank, Wells Fargo, had frozen all of her accounts and was attempting to force her into a financial conservatorship by claiming she was incapable of handling her own finances. But get this the bank had moved the entire thing to the new Wendy's legal team retaliated, accusing her former financial advisor, Lori Schiller, of feeding Wells Fargo false information about Wendy's incapacitation, allegedly after Wendy fired Lori for professional reasons. This was in response to the judge's request from the York Supreme Court for Wendy to be assigned a temporary financial guardian to monitor her cash flow. The Sun reported that in December 2022, Wendy's lawyer came swinging with the counter move, requesting a temporary restraining order against Wells Fargo on the grounds that they were illegally meddling in Wendy's financial affairs and denying her access to her financial statements. However, the court cited Wells Fargo, a financial guardian, but let's not ignore the fact that Wendy openly criticized Lori Schiller and that, at the time of everything, Fargo cooked up a whole conspiracy to place her under guardianship. As you'll hear in a moment, Wendy didn't sound incapable at all, and she didn't exhibit any symptoms of speech difficulties. Genuinely making perfect sense, calmly outlining the details, and describing how people on her own team allegedly pulled a fast one on her. I started asking questions about my money, and Lori Schiller hasn't responded. This is unfair, I want my money, and Wells Fargo hasn't responded to any of my inquiries. Money, this isn't fair at all. And Lori Schiller and Wells Fargo have a guardianship petition aimed at preventing me from accessing my money. 
And this Bernie Young guy, I can confirm this used my American Express card to pay an attorney to file a petition against me. Wendy, speaking in March 2022, sounded perfectly reasonable and coherent. She had used my American Express card to pay for a former doctor who had obtained medical information about me that I had never even received. I fired the doctor, and now all I want to know is where my money is. Now here's where things get really shady Wendy's representatives are now claiming that she was diagnosed with aphasia and Deanna just a moment ago. And that's why she resigned from her talk show. But wait, Wendy's family is pushing back because they don't believe this at all. In fact, Wendy's only when the financial guardian Wendy's court appointed cut off Kevin Jr. Right away, he was promptly evicted from his Miami home. Kevin Jr. Bluntly stated that some members of Wendy's team were pressuring her to drink alcohol and then sleazy signing contracts and documents while she was intoxicated. When Wendy's team allegedly encouraged her to drink and then, during her rehab stay, they allegedly took advantage of the opportunity to plan the entire financial guardianship scheme. That's when Kevin Jr. decided to break his silence and reveal all of his truth in an interview with The Sun. If they're not providing it, they're undoubtedly enabling a Kevin Jr. Complained that the person who hired her was taking advantage of someone who needed to get better. After learning that she was agreeing to things related to her rehab, I thought, okay, they're taking advantage now. Here's another wild plot twist after that Lifetime documentary reportedly attempted to stop Lifetime from airing the documentary back in February. Sabrina Morris, Wendy's financial guardian, filed a lawsuit against the network. However, based on records obtained by The Hollywood Reporter, Morris's complaint was promptly dismissed. Since Morris is an attorney, it is likely that she knew her complaints against Lifetime wouldn't really stand a chance, so why even bring them up? Although it's unclear if Wendy's guardian intentionally used the move against Lifetime to deflect attention and give the impression that she is Wendy's back, many people are conjecturing that it may have been done as a smoke and mirror trick. Fans, on the other hand, didn't waste any time getting in touch.